Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife. I'm Alana. Today I'm back in the kitchen and I will be preparing some freezer meals for the coming week. Now it's a really mild day and I'd rather be out there tapping our maple trees, but I always really hate trying to figure out what I'm gonna make after work for supper if I haven't pre-planned anything or made any um, freezer meals. I usually end up either eating cereal <laughs> and making my family do something similar. So I'm always really thankful that I actually have some meals in the freezer when I do have them because it does save on money. I don't end up going to buy junk or fast food or something like that. And then I know what I'm gonna have. So I found some ground pork and ground beef on sale at the grocery store. I got six pounds of ground beef and three pounds of ground pork. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to split this up and I'm going to make sausage patties with the ground pork and some of that ground pork is going to be mixed with beef for some meatloaf um, leftovers can be meatloaf sandwiches as well we'll be making some chili today and leftovers of chili can also go with some nachos uh, i'm going to be doing some meat pies i'm also going to be making some meatballs for the freezer and i could use those for obviously spaghetti and meatballs i can make sweet and sour or a Korean meatball dish, which is really good. And we can have those with noodles. So I'm gonna turn you around and we'll get started. So for almost all of my recipes, I need onion and garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up all the onions that I need and mince the garlic that I need. And then that's done. And then we'll get started with chili. Now for my sausages, I need really finely minced onion, so I'll do that separate. There, that should be minced finely enough for my sausage patties. So I don't want big, big chunks of onion in those. Next, I need garlic for almost every dish I'm making too, so I'm just gonna mince all of these up. Also for the chili, I, I'm using some mushrooms. These are the ones that I canned. Uh, I just recently did a video on some things that I did with discount mushrooms and pressure canning was one of them, so I'll link that above. So I had some left over from making pizza last night and I will use the rest and put that in my chili. Okay, I'm gonna start with the chili and I'm just gonna portion that out. I use one pound of ground beef for that. And since I have my scale here, I'm just gonna use that to figure out how much. I could eyeball it, but I'm just gonna be fancy today. So I'm just gonna get this beef in here. And we'll get that browned up. And then I'll add the onions, garlic, and some of the mushrooms. I've left this really late. It's three o'clock, so hopefully we can get it all done. Okay, so while the chili meat is browning, I have another cast iron pan here and I'm gonna brown the meat for the meat pie. I'm using two pounds of meat for the meat pie. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a big one and then some smaller ones that we can just use for lunches or if James wants it for a meal and I just wanna eat cereal one night, then I'll use those. All right, I've got the meat browning for the chili and for the meat pies. The beef that I have left, uh, I'm gonna make that into meatloaf and also some uh, a meat mixture for meatballs. So I'll get that stuff going while that's cooking. So for the beef, I have two pounds of beef left. And to that, I'm gonna add half a pound of ground pork and that's for the meatloaf. And then I have another pound of ground beef and that will be for the meatballs. And then the leftover ground pork will be pork sausages for breakfast. Okay, the chili beef is almost browned. I'm gonna add in about enough to equal a small chopped onion and probably equivalent to clove of garlic. And then I'm gonna add in those mushrooms. And I also do the dishes as I go because it's a nightmare to me if I don't. All right, so for the meatloaf, I have two pounds of ground beef and half a pound of ground pork. 
and I'm going to put in enough onion here, chopped onion, so it, that's probably about one, one small onion chopped right there. Maybe a bit, bit more. And then a clove of garlic, about a half a teaspoon of ground pepper, about a half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of dried mustard powder. I have some of this dried thyme from my garden. I also add about a half a cup of my homemade chili sauce. I'll leave the link for that below in the description box. So probably about a half a cup. If you don't have chili sauce, you can always add, I don't know, maybe some ketchup. Maybe a bit more. So this chili sauce was on my blog, the recipe. It's got a step-by-step -step, um, tutorial on how to make it and how to can it as well. Next, one egg. So the next ingredient is usually breadcrumbs, but I don't have any breadcrumbs right now, so I just use oatmeal. My mom always used to do that, so there's probably about a third of a cup, just as a binder. I like to feel it too. I'm gonna add a little bit more oatmeal. I've got the mixture done here. I'm just gonna divide it up into a loaf pan, and I have one of these disposable ones for the freezer with a lid. So I can do like a mini one. So I don't get home from work till about 5.30 and I have somebody at home that can throw a meatloaf in the oven an hour before I get home and then I have time to um, just make a side, a quick side with it. But if you don't get home till later and you don't have anybody at home to do that, you could always put these, uh, the meatloaf mixture into muffin tins and then bake it like that because they'll, they'll cook much faster. So you can throw them in the oven when you get home and while they're baking, make a salad or um, a side for them too. So that's another option. Okay, I'm gonna make a little sauce for the top of the meatloaf. My mom always made this one and it's about a half a cup of ketchup and one teaspoon of dried mustard, quarter teaspoon of cloves, and a tablespoon of brown sugar. Just stir it up and I just smooth it over the top and then I'll put these in the freezer. My mom used to put strips of bacon over the top as well, but I don't have any bacon. So these are ready for the freezer. All right, I'm gonna add the spices into the chili. So I've got a half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of chili flakes, depending on how hot you like that. And I've got two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm gonna let the spices toast in there a little bit. And this is the meat loaf or the meat pie meat. I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic. Probably about one small diced onion and a tablespoon of minced garlic. Some pepper to taste. I put in maybe about three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper. About three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And this goes into the chili. And a tin of baked beans. And then one large tin of mixed beans or whatever kind of beans you want to put in there. So I rinsed and drained those. And I also add one um, tin of tomato soup. My mom always put this in our chili and I loved it because it kind of added a little bit of sweetness to it. So that's what I do. So I'm just gonna let that simmer the lid off just slightly so it doesn't bubble everywhere. I'm gonna let that simmer. Then the meat pie, I actually use some tiny cubed potatoes. My mom used to make this recipe and she, I remember one time she had a little, she had a potato left over, so she added it in there. She also added in a half a tin of baked beans that she had left over. 
and it was so good. That was one of my favorite meals, and it's actually one of my daughters, so that's how I make it now. So probably equivalent to one small or medium potato and just cut them up into cubes, fairly small. And when you bake your meat pie, the potatoes will continue to cook. They'll cook more in the oven. That's why I cut them this small. Next, add a half a tin of baked beans and the other half will just save. James can eat that for breakfast with some eggs and sausage tomorrow. Next, if you have some beef broth or some homemade gravy, you can add it here, but I don't have any and I just keep these on hand just for things like this. So I just sprinkle half a package of the brown gravy mix in here, and then I'll add a little bit of water. That just gives it a little bit of a gravy and helps it stick together a bit. Just about a quarter of a cup of water. You don't want it too wet, but just enough so it sticks together and it adds some flavor. I always find ground beef now from the store it doesn't have the flavor. I mean, I always have to add a flavor to it. It just something missing. Maybe the beef taste. <laughs> I just tasted it and I added just a sprinkle more of the gravy mix. So I, I, I probably used half a package plus a teaspoon extra. I'm gonna do the breakfast sausage patties now. I have two and a half pounds of ground pork and then I'm going to add in finely minced onion that I did. So that was probably a small onion that I minced and two cloves of minced garlic, a tablespoon of sage, and a half a teaspoon of ground thyme or dried thyme. One teaspoon of salt. Now this is chive salt that I made. I'll leave a link to the video above. So you can just use regular salt, but I thought the chives would add a nice flavor. So that's one teaspoon. And about one scant teaspoon of white pepper. I'm just gonna add a pinch of hot pepper flakes. I usually use fennel, but I don't have any. And next, some nutmeg. Probably gonna use about a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Maybe three quarters of a teaspoon. Kind of mix that around a bit. And then I'm gonna add two beaten egg whites. So two beaten egg whites. So I'm gonna add just a couple shakes of Worcestershire sauce, just for good measure. I'm gonna make these into patties now and I'm gonna put them in between pieces of wax paper and then we can just pull a layer out for breakfast or if we wanna have those for dinner with biscuits and gravy or anything. I've never had that, that just sounds really Southern. But anyway, <laughs> if you wanna have that. Um, also, if you wanna test to see if your sausage mixture is seasoned to your liking, just take a small amount and fry it up and then taste it. Um, and then you can adjust the seasoning to how you like it but the longer it sits, the, the more flavor it, it has. So maybe sit it, let it sit for about, I don't know, an hour before you fry it up, then you can adjust it. So just make the patties however, whatever size you like. And I just take wax paper. Now this was lean ground pork. I would try to get um, maybe a medium ground pork just so that there's a bit more fat in it. I could only get lean. That's all you can ever really find anymore. Nobody wants the fat. So there I have two and a half pounds of ground pork. I have 18 sausage patties. So I'll wrap these up, put them in Ziploc bags for the freezer. And then when we want them, we can just take out a layer here, just like that and cook them up for breakfast, like I said, or supper, and they're good for breakfast sandwiches to go as well. And they're ready for the freezer. Next, with the last pound of ground beef, we're going to be making up some meatballs to have these on hand in the freezer for a quick meal. So just really easy, just some onion. And I had some extra left over, so I'll put that in the fridge and we can use that for omelets or anything else that I make. 
and garlic. I'll use up all of that. One egg. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. Again, just you can just do these to your taste. And a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese. Give that a mix. <laughs> I'm stirring with the Sunday spoon. I didn't have the other spoon handy, so this is what this is. Again, I don't have any breadcrumbs, so I'll be using oatmeal as a binder. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. At this point, I'm just kind of going crazy, eyeballing everything and using Sunday spoons to stir. <laughs> So I'm going to be putting the meatballs in these containers today. That way, um, if I decide to bake them, I can just throw them in the oven with this or in this tin or just let them thaw and then fry them. So Two more packages of food for the freezer. So I wasn't filming the last time. I forgot to hit the button. Anyway, um, I'm packing the chili in these wide mouth jars and I just filled them up to the shoulder here. And this is how, once they're cool, this is how I'm gonna put them in the freezer. And whenever I want a jar of chili um, for supper or this size here for lunches, I can just pull it out and thaw it out and they can be heated up in the microwave too. So if you're still worried about your jar cracking, um, what you can do is you can just set this, once it's cool, in your freezer without a lid, someplace where it's not gonna tip. And you can just freeze them until they're solid. See how far it comes up. If it comes up past your lid, you'll know that it would have cracked your jar if you've not left enough space. So that's what I do if I'm kinda worried. Just don't put the lid on, and then when they're frozen solid, then put the lid on. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna do is the meat pies. So the filling has cooled and I pulled some pastry out of the freezer that I had made previously and I can link a video to that pastry recipe that I did above and we'll get started rolling out the pastry for these pies. So if you don't have homemade pastry that's fine you can use the uh, store-bought stuff. The pre-roll or the ones that are um, already in the pie plate for you um, you can also take this and put it in a baking dish and just put some puff pastry over the top too. So that's always nice. So we'll just see how much filling we have left over for small ones. So I think we'll have enough pastry for two that size right there and enough filling too. So I've already got the top rolled out. So not too bad for cleanup. I did the dishes as I went along and I just have to put them away now. So that's it, I'm done my freezer meals for the week. Actually, they'll probably last longer than a week because we won't eat um, heavy meat meals every single night. So at least I have stuff in the freezer and I know I didn't want to do it today, but I'm glad I did. So thanks a lot for joining me today. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you again next time.